somewhere in a dark realm is the castle Count of Aim. The childhood home of none other than the Countess. We are live now at her castle, and she has a very special video planned. For the last week of October, she wishes to share with you some special DVD films, suggestions, special bar moves for those of you who will stay indoors away from the spooks and ghouls this Halloween. <laughs> uh, Countess, Countess, it's the final Friday video. Yes. Oh, but you're not ready. Well, we'll give you a minute. Yes, one minute to change. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Century Countess for our um, last uh, horror theme of October. <laughs> I thought I'd end it with some awesome movie reviews. We have um, a few. I'm probably only going to do probably three, maybe four. I don't know. It depends on how long I want this movie. This video. <laughs> so, um, without further ado, I'd like to start is I love horror movies as well as my historical films. And if you put them together, that's even better. As long as you can get, like, the air right, the um, timeline, you know, we don't want to see Victorian air with Regency costumes. <clears throat> Regency costumes, if you get my drift, you know. But I was going, you know, for us historians, um, costume historians. It's like, it's a little off for people who don't care about that. It's fine. But for me, it's like, um, if you say Victorian, I don't want to feel like I'm in a Jane Austen time frame when it's Victorian. You know what I mean? So anyway, changing the subject, let's get on with our reviews. So, first review is one of my favorites, um, which has three with Debbie Rashawn and Brick Stevens. Two horror actresses I love a lot. I mean, seriously. Rick Stevens um, made history in the Summer Party Massacre, another uh, film I, I strongly suggest for those who love cult horror classics. And it's a good one. Um, this is probably the last of the series. I say probably because I am still hoping for a witch house for and um, it's about a girl named Annie. Um, she leaves her boyfriend to go stay with uh, Stevie and Rose, her former roommate slash friend. And during her stay, they decide to have a little bit of a cult party, and they accidentally uh, summon a uh, witch called her, played by Brink. And then all insanity breaks loose, um, and the story plot changes and evolves. I'm not going to give out full details, but that's basically the intro of the film. So I watch it, and I strongly suggest the, um, the widescreen special edition. This is what it looks like. This is the cover. Because um, it has special behind-the-scenes footages, a uh, mini-documentary, and um, it's really fun, including as every day video footage of filming this movie. And it's so fun. It feels like you're actually there hanging out with the actors and, you know, just seeing what they are like out of character. And you just fall in love with them more. So that's it for Witch House 3. The next one is, as everybody knows, a very cult classic. The original Halloween. Like Christmas, it's never complete unless you see a wonderful life. This Halloween, every Halloween before then and every Halloween after this one, is not complete until you see at least Halloween, the original part one, and maybe a little bit of part two. 
and the other ones, except for part three, because part three was a completely different twist that never made sense and was never picked up after part three. You never know what happened to those characters. Um, basically, if you don't know, it's about a guy, his name is Michael Myers. Um, he was put away in a mental ward after an incident where he murdered his sister for some reason. We don't know. Um, then years later, he breaks up. He's an adult. Um, he breaks out and he decides to continue his rampage. And um, I'm going to go into him. Um, he goes after this one person who uh, basically, allegedly, is his long lost adopted sister. And I'm sorry if I spoiled it for you guys, but you don't find that out until part, you watch part two, which is another spoiler. But I'm sure everybody has seen Halloween classic. And if you haven't, I strongly apologize for uh for it for you. But I did not give out too much detail. Um at least I hope I didn't. <laughs> um so I strongly recommend picking this up because like like I said, Christmas is never complete unless you watch A Wonderful Life. Halloween is not complete unless you see the original Halloween. Next one is another cult classic. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Uh <laughs> this is literally a cult classic. This one cost me like 75 bucks, but it was worth it because it comes with everything, including a poster, um, behind the scenes footage, documentation of where everybody is at. And um, here's my mirror alert. Uh, the guy with the parachute, if you guys have seen that, I'm not, like I said, I'm trying not to spoil it, but it, the main monster is a giant tomato, and killer tomato, but it's fun. It's a great movie, but anyway, going back to the main subject, the guy with the parachute, you'll find out who he is if you've seen or plan to see the movie. I just had a crush on him. He's kind of cute. He still is. He's a little bit of a baldy now, but still, he looks kind of cute, so I can't think of his name right now. I have to watch the movie to remember, but it's an interesting movie. It's an interesting plot. Horror comedy, if you're into that. Now, another interesting horror movie is April Fool's. I think they did a remake of it, but I haven't seen that. But this one, um, this one's a really good one, the original. Not a cute guy, for those who like the cute guys. Um, and um, I didn't know this, but it actually one of the guy actors is in it. Um, he was Sarah Fawcett. I think he was Sarah Fawcett's stepson or yeah, he was his first stepson, and um, kind of cute too when he was young. <laughs> and uh, he's in it. It's about this this group of friends. They're in college. It's spring break, and they're going to see their friend um, at her uh, guest mansion. That's like in the middle of the, on an island in the middle of the ocean, and they're basically stuck there for the weekend because the ferry doesn't show up until Monday. And then a lot of strange things happen after the night, after their dinner party night. And it's a weekend with a lot of surprises. And I will say this, I'm not going to give it away, but I'd watch it because the end twist, you'll be surprised. It's the first horror movie that has such a twist. You will, you have to see it to believe it. But it's called April Fools. Just look for the girl with a cool braid with a, that looks like a noose. It's awesome. The final one is called Clown Town. Now, there's warning. Um, for anyone who are afraid of clowns, I don't recommend this. But if you're okay with movies, set horror movies that involve clowns, this is good. It's actually based on true events um, on an incident that happened in 2014. I forget which state it was, but there was like some sort of insanity thing going on with some crazies that were dressed up as like clown causing havoc. And this is just this is based on that, but a little bit exaggerated. Um, but it's about a group of people who are going to a concert. Their car breaks down, and they end up in an abandoned town that looks like a time castle, and it's infested with a group of clowns. And um, I have to say, some of the clown guys, um, I don't know what to say, if they were on low budget, but some of them are, at least two of them are kind of cute. You've got this rich, uh, beefy, uh, 
Papa. Wow, and then you've got this kind of guy who's in a cute little suit and tie, and um, these kind of people that the other ones are like, okay, those are creepy. But it's like that's the one fail. It's some of the clowns are kind of good looking, which is fine, but for those who really want to scare event, that's the issue. That's the bad part. So that's it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this. I wish you all a happy Halloween and stay safe. This is Century Countess. Have a great day. Bye-bye.